Hi, I'm Senator Malcolm Roberts, and I'm in Brisbane, Australia, and I'm talking with Dr. David Evans in Perth, Western Australia. Internationally acclaimed paleoclimatologist and climate scientist, Professor Bob Carter, said that Dr. Evans is one of the world's top five computer modelers. For six years, from 1999 to 2005, Dr. Evans worked for the federal government's Australian Greenhouse Office, where he created FullCam, the world leading carbon accounting model for estimating the carbon in Australia's forests and agricultural systems. FullCam is part of Australia's national carbon accounting system. It was awarded the Eureka Science Prize for 2008 and received a Special Achievement in Geographical Information Systems Award at the 2010 ESRI International User Conference. Dr. Evans earned six university degrees in 10 years. That's phenomenal, but including a PhD from Stanford University. He's a mathematician, a statistician, and an electrical engineer, and that's quite remarkable. So he's an expert on models. Let's put a few questions to Dr. Evans. What is a numerical model? A numerical model is a bunch of calculations that embodies our understanding of how something works. It's Even, basically, no, go ahead. It's basically a mental picture transferred to a computer program. And whether it's right or wrong just depends on how good our understanding is. Right. How accurate are the climate models, Dr. Evans? Uh, something's not quite right yet. They consistently overestimate global warming. But more importantly, they get the trends in the upper troposphere backwards. This sounds a bit esoteric, but it's actually crucial because the upper troposphere emits more than half of all the heat that the Earth loses to space. And if you can't model the Earth's main cooling mechanism correctly, you're hardly going to be able to model the climate correctly, are you? No, you're not. There are lots of factors in models and many assumptions. What are the key assumptions in the climate models? I suppose... The key assumption is that it is even possible to simulate the Earth's atmosphere with a grid made of cells, and each cell is at least a kilometre high and tens of kilometres wide in each, each direction, which is what all the big computerised climate models do. Now, the weather in each cell is represented by just a few numbers. There's a single number to represent the average temperature, another number for the average cloud content, and so on. Now, this strategy intrinsically fails because there's vital phenomena such as clouds and updrafts that are much, much smaller than any grid cell. We are nowhere near modeling individual clouds and updrafts, but it may be that that is actually what is required to get a realistic simulation of the climate. So what you're saying is that there are quite a few phenomena not understood and Earth's climate is very dynamic and chaotic we don't understand quite a few of those things, so it's not possible at the moment to accurately model climate because the assumptions are not correct. Uh, we're modelling on too broad a scale, and furthermore, there are things about clouds and updrafts that we simply do not understand at any level. We're not quite sure exactly how they work. And a, a paleoclimatologist or a geologist such as Professor um, Ian Plymer understands that slight changes in cloud cover can dramatically influence the temperature of Earth. So. What, what chance is there? So come back to CSIRO's models. What do you know about CSIRO's models? Well, there, there are about 30 groups around the world that produce uh, and run GCMs, the big computerized climate models. Uh, the CSIRO is one of those, and it seems to be up with the rest of the pack, uh, both in terms of quality and results. Should CSIRO's climate models be used for policy? Not yet. Uh, the performance of all the climate models is still wanting. They're not validated. And while the understanding that's embodied in those models is important and should be taken into account, that has to be tempered by real-world data that shows the threat from rising carbon dioxide is not like the models calculate. Right. So in other words, models aren't science. Models can be, at times, if we've got the right assumptions, a good tool as part of science? Oh, very much so, yes. Okay, and, and still, um, the data is what decides science, not someone's model based on assumptions. If the data disagrees with the model, then the model is wrong, usually. 
it's rare that the data is wrong. Well, thank you very much. And what I'm going to do is direct anybody who's uh, interested in learning more of the details. David has an excellent video that we made just a uh, few days ago, and it's a longer video. And David's got the details in that. Have a tune of that. We'll give you the um, we'll give you the link below. Thank you very much, Dr. Evans. Thank you.